it's really great having you back here since the last time you talked to us on VOA. So, um, what's been the most amazing thing you've accomplished since then? Wow, I think I've had some amazing accomplishments. I mean, I think firstly, um, becoming the first global ambassador for Vietnam Relief Services. I mean, ever since I can remember uh, with the entertainment work I did, my health and fitness work, I always wanted to find ways to give back to my community. Just recently, I became the first best Vietnamese athlete for, hence why I'm wearing this clothing. Um, so this clothing stands for Principle Six, which is the Olympics charter principle within their charter that stands for sort of not discriminating against anyone in sport, regardless of gender, race or other. I'll be working with Athlete Ally. They work specifically actually um, ending homophobia and transphobia in sport and creating quality in sport for everyone. So I'll be looking at working with them on that um, within the Asian community, within the Vietnamese community, but I'll also be using this flat platform to create equality for HIV children in sport. Also, you mentioned recently that you've been a guest at the White House and at the vice president's private reception at his home recently. Yes. So what were those events about? I was truly honored. I mean, for, for me to be able to have the opportunity to be invited to the White House and also then to be invited to the vice president's reception at his home was just, you know, as an HIV advocate, was an amazing opportunity for me to be able to raise my voice on an international platform and on that very you know, with those right at the top of, you know, the American community. And I was the only Vietnamese you know, human rights advocates and HIV advocates there as well. So it, for, for me, it was truly an amazing honor just to sort of to share to people you know, what's happening in Vietnam, the work that I do within the HIV community and within sport and with in promoting equality and awareness within the community. Just a quick question. Um, can you speak Vietnamese? Uh, mm. <laughs> I'm actually learning, but not enough to have a conversation. I can say very little things, but I won't today. <laughs> uh, so um, how, how do you communicate with the HIV people like before? You know, I, there, were, there were lots of people that I work with in Vietnam that don't speak English and I don't speak enough Vietnamese. And that's kind of what I want to do over the next year is really get more immersed in my own um, culture um, by taking more more lessons and, and learning it. But you know, we find a way to communicate the little words that I know. Um, I mean, Pham Thi Huy doesn't really speak any English and we write to each other in Vietnamese. I just use dictionaries and it takes me much longer <laughs> than usual to write emails. And when we're together, she speaks a, a, a little English to me. But you know, compassion and kindness is a universal language. You don't necessarily need to speak the same verbal language because there's an understanding between each other of what we want to achieve together to be able to help the HIV community and particularly to be able to help the children there. So we make it work. <laughs> and um, I do have a team on the ground in Vietnam that speak Vietnamese as well, though. So. Um, at the same time, you're not only an athlete, but also a trainer and actress a fashion designer and an HIV activist. How does it feel doing so many things at the same time? Um, busy. <laughs> you know, this is something that I love. Um, you know, when I first started in the industry, I started as a competitive bodybuilder. And then from there, I moved um, into training people, um, Olympic athletes and celebrities, and I became a health and fitness author and I still do a lot of film and television work behind and in front of the camera but it can become a very selfish industry because it is literally about yourself and you know for me I always wanted to do something for the community I always wanted to have a charity and raise my voice for those that necessarily couldn't particularly children who are marginalized in some way and the entertainment industry gave me that platform that and now I try and integrate what I do so if I'm doing something in the entertainment 
industry. I'm like for next year, I'm looking at writing more health and fitness books. I hope to donate part of those proceeds back to my charity and other charitable causes. So I try and integrate things so I have a, a balance between, you know, entertainment work and what I love to do, as well as charitable work and what I love to do there and giving back to the community. But yes, sometimes it can feel very busy. 